All right. Um, applying science for practical purposes is what technology is all about. Creating items to perform tasks, solve problems, make life easier, or perhaps more interesting. Scientists who work in engineering and technology are always looking for ways to make life better. And showing appreciation for advances in technology is what National Technology Day is all about. I mean, these guys, they have made life so easy for everybody. Honestly, it's getting easier. I'm telling you, so I don't even know what would have happened without technology, mm -hmm. right? Um, everything you want to do nowadays, you don't even need to ask anybody any question. Like you literally can just go on one device or the other, get mm -hmm. the information that you need and just get things done. I think technology is good. And it's so sad that, um, especially me, I will not talk about other countries. This is our country. Um, we are not... We are not um, making technology a must from toddler, right? So uh, my sister, like, you know, she just recently moved to the U.S. And her children are in year one. As they were resuming, you know, brand new laptops, different things, you know, introducing them to the, the gadgets and all of that. So when they are doing their work, they are online, they are doing it, different mm. things, you know. But you see, I mean, you get people here up till now in university, 400 levels, studying computer science. If I let's leave the other subjects. So. You're, you're talking computer. about university. Do you know that? in jobs. Ah, no, it's even worse. <laughs> you? But, you know, the, your the, problems you in this country are different. There are people who can't eat one square a day. Yeah. Not three, one. Um, so when you start to try to stretch it to the perspective of technology, then it's, it's a bit of a... I like the fact that we understand the importance of it. We, at least in embracing digital, in embracing the internet, in embracing social media, no matter what it is today, the entertainment industry has taken that sort of YouTube into the consciousness, you know, all those platforms, the digital platforms, into the consciousness of people. So we have a long way to go, but then we've got so many problems. So trying to sort of, I mean, people can't even go to school. We don't have enough schools. So the basic even being able to read A to Z to count 1 to 100 is still but a problem. But you know, Oti, it is costing us so much more. Absolutely. The, the lack Not of education. Not embracing technology. No, I'm even saying. No, yeah, I mean, that, that's what I'm trying to say. That before you even go as far as what the lack of technology is, cost, is, is costing us, talk about what the lack of education is costing you. Mm. I mean, it's, so that's what I'm saying. That there's a plethora of problems that come way before we even get to the thought of Technology, technology as a so the fact is have we embraced it in ways that have changed the lives of every nigerian mm. i mean the impact of um the telcos of of that sort of gsm technology the impact of um data and digital on the banking sector so nigerians are benefiting from technology now if you come at it from the angle of education and where we're going that's a very slow movement but has technology changed our lives in nigeria absolutely just. But we only choose certain sectors for technology to impact on. So it's, it's not about choice. It's you know an, I say it's an so. evolution. Yeah. So, I know. okay, let me take my story because I, I know where I'm going mm -hmm. with this. If they can pull out that video of um, a, the Edo State Deputy Governor, mm -hmm. right? He was calling out 18, um, I think it was 18 local governments for, for just bringing an IGR of 3 millionaire. If mm -hmm. they can pull out that video, please. Let's, let's watch it then. I'll, I'll tie it with this technology. Between now and end of May, I will personally do a letter for governor to sack you people. And before sacking, they should get FC to check your books. True, get EFCC to check all your books, and you'll be fired because it can't continue. We can't continue like this. Get EFCC to investigate all of you, check all your books. After EFC has checked you people, sack all of you. Because how can 18 local government, 3 million in a month as revenue? 18 local government, 3 million era. That was wrong because what I wanted to draw out there, he said he would get EFCC to check their books. Mm -hmm. You understand? Get them arrested. Right, and he was complaining that 18 local governments mm -hmm. bring an IGR that how can 18 local 18 local governments 
produce an IGR of 3 million. It is ridiculous. So we it's sat here last week yeah. with Kole Lawa. We were talking about the public sector. Yeah. Our public service. So again, I, I like, I call these things sound bites, right? There is a process. You don't wait till the end of your, the year to measure performance. You, you manage performance, you set targets, people know what they're doing, their milestones, their checkpoints, whether it's monthly, <coughs> whether it's quarterly. So when I hear things like this, I'm like, eh, so you came to tell us now, you failed. So, so that's where I'm going. Right? For you, for your refusal, just imagine the nonsense that happened on Lekki Ekpah Expressway. Mm -hmm. Do you know that it can be digitalized? It can, you can actually use technology to collect these levies from, the, from, wait, oh, from these buses. They refuse to do that because that is also a, an, a, an avenue to continue to drain the system. You don't want to capture... That is the truth, Uti. So, no, you see, so I agree with you, yes and no. The technology is there. The ability to get an e-tag is easy, or it was easy in the time. You, you are, that's why I said that. I think that you're like 20 steps ahead. There is a change. Yes, there, those gaps exist in the system. I don't think of them as a, as, a, as, a, as a trying to avoid the use of technology. I think that there's a lack of imagination in the way we run these companies, in the places where we can actually generate revenue that we are not. These 18 local governments, they don't need technology to generate more than 3 million. What they need is to actually do their jobs with some in integrity, some clarity, and some no, direction. Let me tell you something. They generate much more than that. They are only declaring 3 million. Uh, so That's that, why he's, he's again, saying that they need to go and check their books. You are still coming back to my point. You, don't, you are looking at technology as a solution. It is one solution. People were running banks before technology came in. Absolutely. That's I what agree I'm saying. With you on that. Let me take Mary's story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was actually holding us so that you you can calm down before you talk. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I have a video actually. Oh, okay. Uh, today's days of videos. Mm -hmm. uh, dancing governor. That's uh, Senator Adeleke, right? Yes. Governor. Uh, oh, sorry, Governor. Governor Adeleke, Adeleke <laughs> set to retire Cristiano Ronaldo. Others, as he displays his impressive football uh, uh, correct, dexterity. Though. Correct. <laughs> correct. Correct. <laughs> if he does nothing else, his entertainment factor is. Oh, now. it's amazing. Like, I mean, sense. I can imagine how happy people are around him. Though he's mm. always entertaining people. Uh, but you know, there's something that is interesting that is happening in Ocean State, right? Um, the discovery of gold. Mm -hmm. um, they have uh, under um, his 100 days, I think, or be 150 days in office, they've mm -hmm. also celebrated the fact that, you know, barely how many days in office they have been able to identify Ocean State as, you know, a, a hub for gold. Mm. And now they want to legally, you know, I think there have been a lot of illegal transactions happening in that gold mining sector. Mm. So legally now he's, you know, bringing it forward, you know, to want to change the um, IGR good. of the, the, the state. So give it to him. He might be a dancing person. But you see, one thing I think I like about his personality is the people around him, mm. right? He has very, very great minds around him. His brothers, you know, his, his nephews, you know. So I, I believe that with an... I think, again, from what I can see, he's someone that is open to great ideas, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, Davido is already talking about taking the timeless concert to Oshun State. Mm -hmm. That is, um, what's it called? That would bring revenue to the state. So, yes, I mean, there are so many things that can happen if you are actually open to so many things, right? Suggestion. But, you know, I don't want to enter that Uti's argument again. So, let me take your I story. was going to say, thank you for buttressing my point. <laughs> but, okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so my story, I mean, I try to, to, to look for positives. I don't know that when things like our topic of today happens, it's very difficult to hold on to positives, but I, I take it where I can find it. So my headline says, EFCC arrests Salimaman, um, ex-power minister, over 22 billion naira fraud. So this is the former minister of power um, who has <coughs> then Excuse been... Arrested, so he was the Minister of Power uh, between 2019 and 2021, was arrested in the early hours of yesterday. He's accused of conspiring with ministry staff in charge of the accounts of the Zungeru and Mambilla hydroelectric power projects to divert 22 billion and share it amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of problems 
in the public sector. I mean, I, I keep saying it, that any president that's coming into Nigeria that doesn't have, for me, there are a few things that I measure you on. I don't, I don't care for all these stories. I'm going to build a million houses. I'm going to employ a million young people. No, I just want to know how you're going to address the public sector. I love how, like I said before, our former guest, Kale Lawal, said this is the welfare system of Nigeria. How you are going to address it, how you're going to make it more efficient, how you're going to make it more cost effective. Those are the things that I'm looking you know, for when I'm measuring thing I want candidate. to even add here mm -hmm. to your measurement, right? Mm. <coughs> so Excuse there me. is the part of you giving all these lofty um, ideas yes. about what you want to do in governance, but there's also that willpower, right? You see, th that's one thing you must give to Governor Ambody. Mm -hmm. Because he was in the civil service, he understood Absolutely. how those leakages used to happen. Yeah. I think that was his biggest you know, problem. Success. Yes. He, so, no, it was, it was the biggest grouse they had with him. Yeah. Because he, when he came in as governor, he was able to lock, you know, maybe he went to the extreme, mm -hmm. but he was able to block all those leakages, right? You can't be complaining that you are, what's it called, you are broke, you are this, and right before your nose, something of this magnitude is happening. Then what exactly are we talking about here? But, I mean, if you, if you look at it, when it comes to the power sector, um, we've had many guests on this show talk about it, and it, it's almost damning when you hear it. But the truth of it is, we have facilities in this country that have staff that aren't generating anything. Nothing. And they're better in salaries. Mm, so Let's come back to that, because it's the... <laughs> yeah, I have plenty of things to say about this 800 million. Where's the dough? We're done. We'll take a break. Stay with us. <laughs>